Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Lisa Natoli and I'm so excited to be here today with a very good friend of mine, Dr. Matt Lyon. Welcome, Matt. Hi guys. And what I do here on these interviews, it just is something I decided to do for fun for me really, is to invite people that I know about in the world who are really teaching about true healing. And I don't know exactly how Matt came to be a friend of mine, um, but some- Corinne Zupko, Corinne Zupko. Well, I know, but it seems like Corinne Zupko was having an event. She published a book and yeah. she's a Course in Miracles teacher. And somehow Matt reached out to me and asked if, if my husband, Bill Free, and I would come down and mm. you invited us to stay in your home. And mm -hmm. I normally don't say yes to stay in strangers' homes, but for whatever reason, I thought, yay, love, we're coming. And so we, <laughs> uh, Bill and I spent an entire weekend in Matt's house and we met your lovely wife, Lynn, and mm. your two beautiful children. And one of my favorite parts about that trip is your daughter. Mm. And, oh my God. Like when I met her, I walk in the house and there she is. How old was she at the time? Five, four. Yeah. She would have been five at the time. Yeah. And she was dressed in uh, dance leotard and so alive and so spontaneous and so mm. happy and I just felt this instant connection to her. And at some point I, th I was looking at this little five-year-old and I'm like, oh my God, that's my future self. Like I didn't <laughs> think like it was me from a child. I was like, oh my God, my future self. It's like, yeah. Oh, that's so great. Reflection. And so we ended up, uh, Matt and I and Bill and Lynn spent the whole weekend almost in the kitchen, mm -hmm. I remember. And yeah. I, I got a, a really great opportunity. I remember we didn't leave those chairs. So we were on these bar mm -hmm. stools in your kitchen and and we just had these incredible conversations about healing and life. And so I'm so excited to have you here, Matt. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to give a little bit of a professional background on Dr. Sure. Matt Lyon. And he's been teaching meditation for 27 years, and he's started his study in 1992, and he had an initiation in a traditional Japanese Zen meditation. He has studied with a monk and a Christian meditation master in the tradition of centering prayer. He's also been formally initiated and trained in Tibetan Buddhism, mindfulness meditation, transcendental meditation, and loving kindness meditation. You have lived and trained at the U.S. Olympic Training Center as an athlete, where you trained in leading edge biofeedback, meditation, and visualization. You are focused on integrative mind-body medicine, and you have a unique approach that works with the body, nutrition, the mind, emotions, and the human energy system. Matt is a chiropractor and an intuitive life strategist to some of the most influential thought leaders. And I know that's um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who I love. And I know that you've also worked with Tony Robbins. And you're also a Course in Miracles teacher. So I'm so happy that you're here, Matt. Welcome. Yeah, so glad to be here. And just as a preface, so we're in the New Mexico desert. So I just have to check the temperature of our phone because um, uh, I do these calls on this beautiful plateau and I'm looking out across the desert and the Rocky Mountains, but the sun will get so hot here. And I was doing a webinar recently and um, my phone, like it, the temperature signal came on. So I'm really grateful to be here and to be talking to you and joining with all your wonderful um, students. And uh, yeah, it's grateful for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. So you originally reached out to me 
when this whole coronavirus thing started and mm. you said, do you want to get together? Do you want to do something? And I was like, yeah, what a great idea. So I thought we could start there and I would love for you to just take it wherever you want. The topic that I like to stay with on these calls is true healing. And yeah. I know that that's a topic that's near and dear to your heart, but I also know your background with meditation. And so mm. I would love for you to really feel inspired to whatever you want to bring. But I think the, the first thing is, you know, during this time um, where so much of the world is experiencing a radical shift in the way we live our lives in our routine, not knowing what comes next. You know, there's mm. a lot of uncertainty and fear coming up. Mm. What are some of the practices um, that you use? And I also would love for you just to share your story in your own words of yeah. really how you come to this work. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we can cover all that. I guess, you know, to start, what's on my heart to say to you and, and, and to myself and, you know, to everybody's on this call is that, um, God, you know, you know, I talked to back when I was in college. So like 1994, I remember I called Jerry Jempolsky. Remember Jerry Jempolsky? I came to A Course in Miracles in 1992. Um, I read Marion Williamson's A Return to Love. I was 16 years old. I was a junior in high school. Changed my life. So I then read Love is Letting Go of Fear by Jerry Jampolsky. Now, th this, that was when I started down this whole um, rabbit hole. It was when I just really made a yes to God. I just said yes to God. You know, I, I came from a really dysfunctional, crazy home. My father was alcoholic. He had bipolar disorder. We had lots of, you know, pain in our family and through the generations. And, um, and I just remember coming to a crossroads and there was a decision. It was a decision point and it was, um, you know, it was this Morpheus for, for the uh, Matrix fans out there, you know, was standing before me and said, hey, you know, which color pill do you want to take? And I thought, you know, I, I don't know how to do this. I, I, you know, my best thinking got me to where I was and I needed a new level of thought, new level of reality. And I didn't quite have the language for it, but I knew that there was spiritual help available. I'd always talked to Jesus my whole life, but I wasn't involved in uh, religion very specifically. And I just, I knew there had to be a better way. You know, I so relate to Bill Thetford's and Helen Shookman's story in the midst of their you know, drama and academia. I believe it was Bill, right? Who said, there's got to be a better way. Yeah, and um, that little willingness opened the door for me. So, you know, fast forward, um, I fell in love with The Course in Miracles. I didn't have the money to buy the book at the time. I was a freshman in college. Um, I started practicing the principles of A Course when I was 16. And I'm totally convinced that I was brought to a university where I never should have gotten into. <laughs> I never, I did not have the marks or the qualifications to get into this school, but, but I know the Holy Spirit led me there. And there, I just went really deep into a course, really deep into it. I've always had a penchant for meditation. So, you know, for me, those worlds were uh, contiguous. It was a very fluid experience i don't separate them now so much because you know meditation is just this you know it's just being it's just it's just accepting my coordinates in the mind of god and and allowing that to create an awareness where i get to choose my thoughts i get to choose correction each moment so but i remember when i called jerry jump polsky and i was like hey I know you don't know who I am. I remember when I called him, he was like, who, wait, who are you? How did you get my number? I was like, well, I called around. I think I talked to your brother by accident, but I just really want to know what the essence of this course is all about. And I, I, I want to run a marathon to donate money to your center for attitudinal healing. And 
So for me, healing and attitudinal healing and mind shift and mind correction and miracle mindedness was really just in the foreground of my life. But you know, it, you know, it came from pain. It came from hurt. It came from knowing that my best thinking got me to where I was and that what had been modeled before me was a, you know, was an exit ramp off into the world of fear and suffering and separation and hurt and, you know, broken relationships and depression and anxiety, all of which I'd experienced. So, you know, right, right away from me, I was like, you know, in Zen Buddhism, I remember there was a story that, that my first teacher told me uh, and I asked what enlightenment was. She said, she wouldn't answer me, which I thought was great, you know, because my mind wanted to define this thing. And I love a course's you know, definition that enlightenment is not, it's not a change, it's just a recognition. So she wouldn't answer my question. But what she did say is she said three things. She said, attention, attention, attention. And then she said, and you have to go after that like a man whose hair is on fire seeking a pond. And I thought, okay, that works. And so I really loved God and loved this course. And my goal was God. You know, my goal wasn't a better self. Not that I haven't, you know, gone through that. Maybe we can talk about that later. But my goal was God. My goal was awakening. And um, the peace of God is my own, was my only goal. And I was so motivated and innocent about that and it just really altered everything so that was basically the start and well as you're talking you're reminding me of what we spent the whole weekend at your house talking about because yeah i remember us talking about jesus and mm -hmm. dedicating our lives to this work and not yeah. knowing what that meant but just saying we we were here or available we we or this was a couple of years ago now but even then we were both under the recognition that there was a change in the world and that both of us i remember you were going through a change with your business and yep. you, you were like i don't even want to hold on to my job anymore i don't want to all the mm. things that have defined me I don't yeah. care about any of that anymore. And you were in this space of total openness and like, I'm just listening. And I don't know, it just, it just felt like this place of like, okay, all I have to do is say yes. And I know that a lot of the people that I interact with nowadays have the same thing. It's like a, a desire to just be here to be truly helpful and to let go of their own plan. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's funny. I love that you just brought up all of that. And yeah, during that time, you know, I had built this massive chiropractic practice. It was one of the biggest practices in the world of its kind. And I really attained, I don't like the word attain, but I had experienced a real level of success in this world. And on the one hand, it was great. You know, it afforded such opportunity to work with thousands of clients and, you know, many, many well-known famous people. And I got to travel all over the world and teach. And, you know, at the end, though, I was like, wow, okay. There was this, you know, in the individualized curriculum perspective, I just kind of knew that the, uh, <laughs> the expiration date on that carton of milk was coming due. And I love what you said about the helpful piece. You know, I think that my favorite, my favorite line, I, well, I can't say my favorite line because I'll come up with 10 different lines from a course and they'll all be my favorite line. But it's, I'm here only, only to be truly helpful. I love words, right? So I am only here, right? That's big, only. My only purpose is to be truly helpful. And I'm content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I never have to worry about what to say or what to do. I, I love that so much. So yeah, that, that was a major, another crossroads in my life. And so I think you, you had come in at a really interesting time when, uh, from an energetic perspective, frequency was quickening in, in me and in Lynn, and there was lots of transformation happening. And there was such a desire of the heart to become aligned and congruent with that new frequency. And that meant a death 
to what was, stepping into the unknown, knowing that what was to be is not yet. And that really though, that, that a spirituality of the unknown was what was calling. Me. And so, uh, yeah. And that, that's when I was really involved with Corinne Zipko's uh, work and I love her, love you, Corinne, love your podcast. And so it was just really diving in deep. So yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, this is all germane to a conversation about this current COVID situation, crisis opportunity and what true healing is. Because I think well, that's what you, what you just said to me is so perfect for these times, because this really is an opportunity for everyone to let the past go, to really let yeah. the story go, to let it be dismantled. And that is a place of tremendous fear for anyone who experiences it, because mm -hmm. we don't know what the future holds. And so often I remembered that, that time on that weekend, I was like, you should totally go for it. Like I remember telling you that because you'd had this practice and I, but I knew you personally and I kept saying, you're the teacher, like to, mm. to step into that place. And we have to go through any doubt that we're experiencing. We have to yeah. stand in that place of like, I don't, I mean, especially because you had experienced the kind of success you had experienced also to be willing to just throw your hands up early and go, I'm willing to just let this all go. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I think this is, this, this for me, I can only speak for me. And that was true healing. You know, a snake must shed its skin. If snakes do not molt, if they don't shed their skin, they die. And, you know, and, and I, I mean, it, so again, like one of my big imperfections is, I love control. I love to have a map. I love to have a direction, you know, and in some, some ways it's really, it, it is useful to have direction and life sometimes just comes along like this situation now. And there's, this is uh, to quote Pema Chodron, the Buddhist teacher. This is the wisdom of no escape. I just got chills. You know, there's just the wisdom of God alone. I used to, um, I loved Paramahansa Yogananda, you know, the author of Autobiography of a Yogi, and he had this nun, and she wrote this book called God Alone, and I remember God Alone, God Alone, that was like my mantra, and so at that time, and definitely during this time, there really is the wisdom of no escape, that God alone is, you know, St. Teresa of Avila said, let nothing upset you, let nothing frighten you, everything is changing. God alone is changeless. Patience attains the goal. Who has God lacks nothing for God alone fills every need. And so I think it's so easy, like for me, I can only speak for me, right? But it's easy for me to say really spiritual things and feel really spiritual and then secretly being like, okay, good. So if I'm really spiritual and I do everything right, my life will be just right and I'll be healthy, happy, wonderful, terrific, rich <laughs> and all that. And, you know, it's this subtle ego game of like, you know, trying to game the system using different meditation techniques or doing the right things is a whole nother level of spiritual surrender and friendship and love with God and maturity to be like, okay, here I am. You know, it's like in that um, new version, not the new version, but I guess that slightly modified version of the course that came out a couple years ago uh, through that group from Sedona, Arizona. Um, Lord, here I am. Or here I am, Lord. And he replies, I am here. And that's really what this is, you know. And to me, that's true healing because then, you know, not to be too abstruse about this, but really when that's authentic, the mind, the energy system of the human being now shifts from sort of like an accordion, like shrunken thing and it expands. It becomes one with this fabric of the mind of God. And that's, that's true healing. You know, you, you, when that system changes, Einstein said that the field is the soul governing soul only S O L E it is. And I like S O U L, right? It is the soul governing agent of all matter. And that, that frequency that of oneness is so powerful. 
then not only is it so powerful, like it's omnipotent, it's omnipresent, it's um, it's all powerful. I love how in the Bible, you know, it always says almighty, almighty. And so we lose the impact of that word loses it because of the Christianese, but that almighty, and it's so here and it's so present, an ever present help, an ever present help in our time of need. So, um, yeah, super critical stuff, super critical uh, teachings and um, hopefully but that, I like that, that you mentioned the thing about you know the perfection and like one of the mm -hmm. things I always am emphasizing in my teaching is just be a child again like so mm -hmm. often on a spiritual path we have an idea that we're supposed to be perfect or there's an ideal and even in healing there's some kind of an idea that there's an outcome later it's always later. Yes. It's always in the future. Yes. So it's like, okay, I want healing. And it may be a body healing or it might be I, I need more money. It's like some, mm -hmm. something external to change the conditions because like, we have decided that this isn't how the story is supposed to be going. Right. It's supposed to be going another way. Yeah. And true healing is instantaneous available in this moment now because it's i loved what you said about attention 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 is mm. that we move our attention from the external and the, the situation as it's occurring and the attention now goes to the aliveness the joy the mm -hmm. the seeing things as they truly are, even in the middle of what seems really bad, like people dying, people getting yeah. sick, people yeah. losing their jobs. Like it's, this is, this to me is, is the journey because I definitely do not have my head stuck in the sand. I'm watching the news on a regular basis. I right. know exactly what's going on. I'm following all the, you know, the, social distancing right now i'm being really present but at the same time my joy is as it uh, always was it hasn't changed because yeah. the picture changed and one of the things that i feel very deeply is that as individuals say okay i'm gonna stand still in the middle of whatever's happening and allow this transformation to occur mm. and then we can be in the middle of this so-called darkness or pain or confusion and actually be helpful then we can offer yeah. comfort and yes. healing and blessing and so that to me that's what this is about it's not like to me healing is like a like let's heal it so it goes away no, mm. healing is each one of us to say, okay, like there's a place in me that's changeless and mm. eternal. I, and you have a really beautiful uh, guided free meditation on your website. I want everyone to know about it. Yeah. And, and your website is, tell it to me again because you have two. It's something. Dojo. Diamond Heart Dojo. Diamond Heart Dojo. 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 Yeah. And D O J O. You know, it's based on, um, well, it's just based on all these teachings. And it, so it's a simple guided meditation that people can use. It's based on them um, when St. Paul said, you know, God's grace is sufficient unto all of our needs, for his power is made perfect through our imperfection. His power is made perfect through my imperfection. And I uh, mean, so much of what you said, just, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, one of my favorite lines from A Course in Miracles is, there, there you go again, right? One of my favorite lines, just say that about all of them. There's a place inside of you where you're never alone. There's a place inside of you where nothing is impossible. Nothing. And what, what I love that you said in your 40-day program is watch your mind like a hawk. That's that attention, attention, attention. And listen, I've done this. I know so many people, like we try to spiritually bypass what's here. 
And I remember Marion Williamson was recently in Colorado where I was living and she gave this great talk about proper disassociation that like tuning out and pretending things don't exist isn't actually what the course was talking about. It was full engagement with right mindedness. And so this attention, attention, attention is a huge practice for me. Like, where am I falling into fear? Where am I falling into doubt, dread, disillusion, depression? And just to watch. And I think meditation's gift is to strengthen the capacity of the watcher, the observer, of the spirit, the essence. And then what, ha what I see is when anybody, myself or anybody else, then watches a program or watches a pattern and says, Holy Spirit, come correct this. Jesus, come correct this. And I love that about the course. It's not like, no, I have to figure it out on my own. It's not like I'm sitting here and I'm going to sort of like through my own psyche spirit muscle, I'm going to like work it through myself. No, I invite in this incredible grace and say, my mind is really twisted up right now, Jesus. Can you please help me see this straight? I'm here only to be truly helpful. I'm here. Only. And so there's two things that happen to that. There is a vibrational shift and we're either one mind or we aren't. <laughs> and so if there's a vibrational shift in me, if there's a vibrational shift on someone watching this, if there's a vibrational shift anywhere, it is contributing to the field. It is contributing energy and energy is, is information. So we don't know them through the individualized curriculum. Maybe, well, let, let me not, I had two thoughts, simultaneous thoughts at once. So we don't know where that's going to go. Somebody in New York City could be really scared and all of a sudden experience a moment of peace. That moment of peace may then shift their physiology so that their body's able to fight the virus because their individualized curriculum was that was their journey. You know, we don't know who else. Maybe someone is on the transition point where their, their body is going to dematerialize and they're going to return back to source. Their spirit is going to return back to source. And there's, there's a light that carries from our choice to see what's happening now that can help usher them. I mean, I see that in my psychic eye all the time. And so healing is so interesting because, yeah, especially culturally as Americans, and I think generally in the industrialized culture, we want what we want when we want it. And whether it's through, you know, personal development, uh, abundant psychology, all of that's useful. It's, it's useful. It's just a tool. You know, the Holy Spirit can use all that as a tool. It's just, it's limited. You know, the, the different manifestation techniques, they're really cool. They're beautiful. They're reflections of truth. But their power, I think, this is just me, but their power is in this wholehearted surrender and this yes to God as God is that says, take me, use me, be me. I'm yours. And so there's a real big difference between healing and curing. And they often go together, but sometimes they don't. Uh, can I tell you a story? Um, yeah, before I just want to just before I lose the train of thought, everything you are saying is so exciting for me. It, but, <laughs> me yeah, too. I, I, I'll catch you back up. You're going to tell a story. But this yeah, yeah, it's cool. Full, good. full engagement. And this idea of like, we want it when we want it. And that is the thing that's blocking everyone. It's like... Ooh old idea in law of manifestation and an idea of how our lives are supposed to go and how they're supposed to look and for me my total freedom and my joy and all the peace that was always available to me finally was in full awareness it was always there but I couldn't see it because I was so focused on like the body should be functioning this way and my bank account should be this way and this person yeah. should be acting this way. And because those things weren't happening the way I thought they should be going, I was in grievances and, you know, I'm doing something wrong and I get, I don't, I'm not sure how to use the power of my mind, I guess, because why haven't I manifested this thing? Mm -hmm. And when I finally was in full engagement, I love that you use that word. And I let go of every idea of what I thought it was supposed to look like. And we can now come into a place like coronavirus and the world. This is what it looks like right now. Yeah. And we don't have to change it. We have to just change how we're seeing it. And there's so much beauty yeah. 
And so anyways, I just wanted to make sure I didn't lose that train of thought. No, this is a really good point. You actually brought up something that makes me excited. I remember when you were talking about when you were working in a catering business, I think somewhere in New England, and there was some like giant crash, right? Like the food was destroyed or something. And I remember your phrase, oh, that just happened. David Reynolds wrote this book, Constructive Living, and you know, for I love the way of the peaceful warrior, Dan Millman. It's a great story. Anyway, David Reynolds was really instructive in Dan Millman's career. And he always had this question, okay, and now what needs to be done? Okay, and now what needs to be done? And I just wanted to reiterate too, this process of mind correction completely sends light rippling out through the field. Moreover, it then has this capacity then to direct me to what's the next right kind act. And, and to be so present to where people are truly at and not try to spin the story in some metaphysical maze so that we're trying to avoid what is, but actually full engagement with what is unleashes really divine power. And, um, you know, and, and I'm so and look, happy that you're saying all of this, because see, this yeah. is like to yeah, yeah. us, this is how each of us is a healer. Like yeah. is to really be so present and I loved how you just said that, like that. Yeah. And, okay, and what was the first part? And then follow up with the kind. What would say it again? Gosh, I don't even know what I said. You know, I think the attention and awareness and the correction, the miracle correction, the correction of thought, the reuniting of the thought essence, etheric fibers that like remesh with God's heart, then tune me into the heart of another human being. And, you know, that miracle of that, that transmission, that, that, I don't like the word transaction, but that experience and that sharing, that extending of love, then it just gets so clear and so practical. And, you know, there's, as we know, there's no order of difficulties and miracles. So, you know, if I was to hold my hands over someone with COVID and they were healed, cured, from the spirit's perspective, being on the phone with someone who's scared and comforting their heart or extending love or sending a check to an organization that might be helping people. There's no order of difficulty and miracles. So that only being helpful thing really takes on a very directed and personalized thing. You know, one thing well, I wanted I just, to say I too. I just want to stay with this one for a second because you just yeah, brought stay up with a very it. good point. Like this idea of like the old model of healing, like that I'm going to hold my hands over someone and that you're healed mm -hmm. of COVID or you're healed of mm -hmm. Like that is actually available, but it's not the way that we thought it was with the, with the, like, I have a power and now I'm, you know, yes. or sending light. But because of like what has happened to me in dealing with physical symptoms for many years that went on like six or seven years, I think, and I couldn't heal them. I could not make them go away. I've been totally dedicated to God. I tried the medical mm. route. I tried the spiritual route. And it was only finally when I stood still and had total acceptance of this condition exactly yeah. as it was without wanting to change it and to find the peace and joy in that, that's when the healing happen and of course it was available yes. to me six years earlier yeah. but I was so focused yeah. on like this shouldn't be happening and I want this to go away so that I can get back to my perfect happy healthy life and yeah. I discovered my happy healthy perfect life was always in the moment but I was missing it mm -hmm. and so yeah. that's such an incredible thing like even if somebody is on their last breath, let's say, and they have been uh, po tested positive, they've got all the symptoms, they've got the respirator, they're on their way out. Even then, the perfection is a sh one shift away. To come yeah. into that place of like, no, to me, that's the only journey there is in this lifetime is to yeah. know the self. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so well said. You know, from, I love this. This is like an energy thing. And I've seen this and I've seen this and I've seen this and I've seen this. When there's that mind shift, that attention shift into total acceptance. So we're aware, 
we then acknowledge what is, but then we move into acceptance, AAA. You know, it's like AAA when your car breaks down. You can call on AAA when your mind breaks down. <laughs> when, we, when we really authentically move into acceptance, like you did, and I don't mean like, oh, okay, you know, it's all good, and really, you know, we're not all good with it. We, we need to be real with what is and bring that Holy Spirit into all the junk. But once that happens, authentically acceptance sets in. And acceptance opens up access to free, unbounded, infinite energy. Like that's just the way it is. I, when I see how energy works and moves and have been doing this for a long time and thousands of clients, as soon as they move into that, and it's almost as if the human personality, ego structure, we want to use that phrase, doesn't care anymore because it knows it's intrinsic, innate, natural perfection. It just is there. And I just got chills just saying that then there is a transformation of mind, body, spirit. There is also clearly to me, I mean, I'm a, I'm a scientific pragmatic person. There are clearly to me, if, if the course says that there's an individualized curriculum, then it very well could be part of that person's healing that, um, the cure doesn't happen. And that's completely okay. And I think that's that, that's that paradox between healing and curing. Healing is wholeness. A curing is a physical transformation back to a normal baseline. But sometimes a normal baseline isn't what that person's teaching curriculum is for others. I mean, it's, I've just seen it. I've, there's a number of saints who've gone through difficult stuff. I mean, these are very highly realized beings. Now, granted, I never sat down with them. You know, I didn't know how they were with their kids or their, you know, aunt Milda. I don't know, but there's been some pretty profound masters who've gone through this. And, and I think that, oh, well, this is the other thing I want to say. So there's this difference between healing and curing. And then it's what I noticed is that when I was involved in certain teachings and I was involved in certain communities and I'd be traveling around the world, you know, doing all these exotic locations and, you know, helping facilitate these incredible retreats and healing retreats. And, you know, people are having all these incredible experiences that the ego loves shy, bright, shiny lights. And I think there's a mystical law to not chase after the spectacle, that, that the miracle is so close. It's so close. And sometimes it can come with bright, shiny lights and the great rays. And, you know, people can be knocked on their uh, but, you know, by the, by, the, by the power of spirit. And I've seen that. It's happened. I've gone through stuff like that. But, you know, that chase for the next experience actually is part of the dream of separation because it, it implies a fundamental misperception that I am not that. I am not. I am not. And really, we are. I am. I am. You know, as, as Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, you know, before Abraham was, I am. We know that. Everybody on this call knows that. And yet it's so easy to think, uh, it so works for Matt, or Lisa Natoli's got her stuff all together. Oh, I need, I need to get my next hit. I need to get my next hit. And so that the, the shadow side of that manifestation path is just a separateness from this incredible tender love that's here right now. And that's with every person who's scared right now and is with every person who's sick right now and is moving and flowing. I love how the course says to properly judge any situation, you would have to become aware of an infinite number of variables. And as someone, you know, who had a training background in quantitative economics, you know, I would run these mathematical models when I was in college, you know, to try to figure out economic systems. This is all my pre-med training, but I mean, the number of variables there you'd have to fix for. So I think in the world of spirit, okay, I can't judge, but I can come into this present moment. What's real now? What would love have me do now? What it takes a little willingness, a little willingness. That's the beautiful thing about the course and about God, because it's not even about the course. The course is just a finger pointing at the moon. I don't need to get hung up on the finger. I want to get to know the moon. Yeah. And it's this you're just reminding me, you're reminding me of a story my friend Max from Australia said is he told me. Oh yeah, please share. About, um, a guy who traveled the world sitting with enlightened masters and he studied every uh, possible 
spiritual path and whatever and he couldn't find it like he kept mm-hmm. seeking and never finding and then finally he gave up and he went home and he was sitting in a chair in his living room <laughs> and that was when he realized oh this is it like just that's yeah that's what you're expressing right now is is like yeah we we think i'm so happy that you said it also because so many people think oh i have to do something else yeah to get more knowledge or to have another experience but the experience that everyone is looking for is right in the place where you are and i loved what she said about the triple a like attention yeah. awareness and allowing like can you can you yeah acknowledge a, aware and accept yeah oh acknowledge aware and accept can you maybe give some examples i love the how to like for some yeah yeah definitely if, definitely you know let's just say that someone's watching this and they're experiencing just whatever the fear is of whatever the moment mm-hmm. is like what would you say to them as a practice definitely thing? sure so um so the first part is acknowledge which means to give voice to and that's not to shy away from the fear that's not to try to paint a spiritual glow around the fear that's not to try to be um something that we're not so for instance um yeah, i'll give you a personal example it's a very real and vulnerable example so we we've been living in colorado and when covid came i got the very clear intuition to um come to new mexico we have a uh, very very close family friends here and we're on this big 100,000 acre ranch and um so when we were here you know we have to homeschool our children as an example we don't have really good wi-fi which is why i'm sitting in this car which is why the phone moves around because again if it gets in the sun it'll it'll get hot we'll lose our connection <laughs> and you know thoughts were coming up for me like oh my god so irritated i have so much work to do and i have no wi-fi and i have to drive up to this hill and i gotta homeschool my kids i'm not up for this task like they're annoying what is happening oh my god i'm such a terrible person i should be such a better father oh my god i should be so much more enlightened than i am uh what's happening to the stock market what's happening oh my god my friends people are gonna die the world's never gonna be the same and literally it was just this like (laughs) i mean if so what i did is i just said okay stop what's really going on here and i would just give it a voice there's a couple ways to do that the how to's you can write it down i personally like to just go for walks with jesus and say jesus here's what's up man yo jesus this is what's up bro i mean it said he's our elder brother so i'm like bro come on this is crazy what the happening in this world i'm scared i hurt i feel out of control i feel incompetent Okay, so there's acknowledge. Then becoming aware is, and this is a this is a very powerful tool because, you know, the body, whilst being not real in the deepest sense of things, is our experience in this moment by moment by moment. It gives amazing feedback. So then the fastest way to become aware of energy patterns is to feel the sensation in my body, for instance. So then I can say, oh, my heart hurts. Like I can feel it right now. Like I can call, I can bring that up. My heart hurts. It feels broken. I feel sad. I want to cry. I, I, you know, my neck hurts. I feel anxious. I feel heat in my belly. Okay. All right. So I'm aware that I'm aware. Okay. Let me bring, let me expand my awareness. Wow, I feel the hurt in this world. I feel the vibration of fear in this world. Okay. That's there. That's there. And so what's happening is now I'm moving into a place of just pure awareness pure awareness and now it's almost like i'm observing these energy patterns from the place of total wholeness it's not spiritual bypassing it's not just you know trying to like use a thought swatter you know use the course to swat away painful thoughts i don't think that's helpful and in fact when i notice people do that and this isn't a judgment per se it's an observation that that actually concretizes those vibrations more in our energy field in our body, the more we avoid them. And then the more spiritual people try to be, well, it's all, you know, there's nobody even to be here to observe this. Nothing's real. There's nothing to do. And I'm like, um, 
on an absolute level, that's true. But on a relative level, that's an avoidance. And then when I avoid there, I can't be the hands, the feet, the voice, the eyes that Jesus needs to then work a miracle. I can't. I just step out of it because I don't want to feel the discomfort of what's going on. That, that to me is not effective. It's, it's not bad. It's just not effective. <laughs> and, um, you know. And then what's the third uh, one? So that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, yeah. So there's acknowledge and then there's becoming aware and then there's moving into acceptance. Okay. Of like, okay, I've acknowledged, I've given it a voice. There's the full experience. And there's a natural energetic morphing into a much more spacious field. Now that sounds very trite and it's like, oh, well, that's very convenient formula, but here's the deal. Once I acknowledge and once I become aware, acceptance in the truest sense is a total release and a total openness and a total yes to what is. On a practical relative level, that means then I shift my attention to what the next loving miracle is. And I love that about the Course. Then it's, okay, Lord, Use me, be me. I'm here only to be truly helpful. And then I just literally, almost like um, a radio station, I just tune my radio station for where I can be helpful. And maybe that's just closing my eyes and sending love. Maybe that's calling a friend. Maybe that's doing an Instagram live video. Maybe that's doing a YouTube video. Maybe that's reaching out to you and saying, we can do this. And so then I direct, then my attention goes to the frequency of love and compassion. Now I'm in the acceptance place. And what every single time, then I go back to what the original thing was. And I'm like, oh my God, I, it's not even like, it's just not even there. And I wasn't trying. I was just in reality. I wasn't arguing with reality. You know, as Byron Katie says, when we argue with reality, we're going to lose 100% of the time. And I've lost enough where I'm like, yeah, yep. Jesus, I need a better way. Thank you very much. And there's, Paul's quote again, that in my imperfection and in the willingness to be with that imperfection is God's power made perfect. And then that acceptance is peace. You know, the peace of God is my only goal, my purpose, my function, and my life while I abide where I'm not at home. And I, yeah, so that's it. That's, that's how AAA works. I think that the peace that a lot of... That. That's, yeah. I just love that, AAA. Yeah, and I think the piece that a lot of course students miss, and I, and I understand why, because the metaphysics of the course, um, and, you know, I'm totally willing to be wrong or not 100% course correct, um, but the body awareness piece, I think, is a very important tool. It doesn't make the body real so much as it makes whatever's happening in this moment um, brought to the altar. And so I think sometimes... It, people get a little conceptual and get lost in the mental level. And there's a lot here in the energetic level that body awareness can bring us, that breath awareness can bring us. And so, you know, it, like, like it says in the old Testament, like we want to pray with our whole body, our whole mind and our whole spirit. And, you know, I realize from a very, uh, you know, classical course perspective, there's major theological differences, but man. But I like being that you aware. said, I have the same exact experience that you do, Matt. Yeah. I'm like, these things are true in the absolute and truth is true. And yes. one of the things that's been coming to me lately is that over the last, I don't know, 50 years, maybe there's been an experience for many people of channeling. There's like, there's the body personality and then there's yeah. the spirit or the being that's now coming through this person. And there's very distinct, um, you know, there's the being has maybe a different energy field and a different voice. And my experience is that what's happening in the world for those who will allow it is an integration where there's no more channeling. So this light frequency, yeah, it's like Jesus talks about in A Course in Miracles, the purification of our old thoughts of separation and sickness. Yes. And, and then the integration where the light now integrates because the body is purposeless. Like that's why we have to let go of our plan. So when Lisa and a totally personal self identity doesn't have a plan anymore, then the light 
can be used because it's like, well, I don't know what happens next. I don't care. Like in more and more people, I know you are coming, have come to this place of like, here I am, Lord. Yes. And in that sense, like now the body is it actually is made perfect. I love that you use that yeah. quote. It's made perfect in the imperfection of like the, the old ego mindset of, yeah. like, oh, I have to be a perfect spiritual student or teacher. Or, um, so to me, like this is an exciting time. Like I, and I actually have been encountering a lot of people who have a course in miracles who are expressing joy and peace and they're actually feeling like I shouldn't, um, maybe I shouldn't be feeling this way. Like they feel an excitement and that's how I feel. I just feel like, okay, yeah, wow. We're in a major, major world shift right now. And there's no going back to the way we were living mm. before. There's and no, so we should all just get rid of that idea. And Completely. then acceptance. Yeah, well, and this is what all the mystics and the course and, and many of us have had these experiences often, so often, and they're so quiet, or sometimes maybe they're very profound, but that profound infinite ocean of peace, of heaven, of the kingdom of God, that that is not an abstraction to me. It's no longer an abstraction. It is a fundamental working reality. And so from that vantage point, there's so much peace. I had this, uh, when I had gone, after I'd been in practice for a long time, I was really not sick. I had a ton of back pain. I had weeping eczema all over my body. That is so funny though, that you're a chiropractor and have back pain. Right. Totally, totally. Yeah. And I mean, and I'd been teaching, you know, spiritual stuff. And so for a long time and if, and, my human ego was like, Oh my God, how do I keep this secret? I don't want anybody to know how broken I am. And then, I, and then, you know, by the grace of God, <laughs> if the grace of God is sufficient unto all your needs, God will always do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, especially if we just call that name, you know, whatever that name is that Jesus is, is, is the portal to me into the infinite. It's very accessible to me because I have literally encountered him in so many ways through my whole life. So, I had this experience where I was in this quiet meditation for a long time. And um, I got to the point where you did. I was like, you know, and, you know, pardon my language, but I'm just going to say it like I would talk to Jesus. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, I don't even give a shit anymore. Like, just take me, use me, be me. And I remember it wasn't that I had an out of body experience because really what is the body? I mean, the body is, is, is the entire fabric of all reality. So I just was not bound by some limit that, you know, my body is this little meat sack, you know, this little skin sack. And so I'm laying there after this long meditation, I was so peaceful and I just was like, Oh my God, peace. Yes. Like I'll take this. And remember this is after like three years of insomnia, back pain, um, neurological symptoms and, you know, inflammatory skin disorder. And I'm laying there and all of a sudden this, this light appears and the light had, it was communicating to me. And I'm, <laughs> and I say this with love and respect to all traditions, but I'm not a big channel fan. Like I sort of, you know, maybe the tough part of me from New England is like, you know, are you legit? Like, come on, well, show me your street cred. You know, like anybody can do anything. So I said to this light, I said, hey, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I said, Jesus, come on, come here, Jesus. You got to step in between. The th if this is real, I surrender this situation to you. You know, the chorus is just give everything to the Holy Spirit. Give everything to Jesus. So I do. And all of a sudden, like I'm blasting through different dimensions and i guess the best way to say that it was like you know it was like changing tv stations there was a very different frequency and i settle in this place with this being of light and with jesus and um i was clearly with my sister who had passed away it was a very beautiful place it was more beautiful than earth and i love earth i mean i love the body i love life i love I love fun. I love sunsets. I like dinners. I like friends. I, I love life. But this was like, whoa, this is so rad. 
And I remember the peace and the healing that was there. And then this being said to me, time to go. And, um, and then I was like shot through this tunnel again. This is my subjective experience. And I went to a place where there was no, there was nothing substantial. There was just the essence of these intelligent beings and they didn't really even have humanoid forms. But what was struck me is the incredible compassion and love and grace and the knowledge of every fabric of every thought I'd ever had and everything was wholly accepted. And I thought, oh my God, I can't get any better than this. Like, this is amazing. Like, I never want to quote unquote go back, even though there is no going back because that's part of who I am. And then the guide was like, all right, let's go. And then I blast off again and I go to this next level where it was almost pure space. I guess the best way I can describe it was there were these formation of particles. They weren't substance particles. They were like information packets that sort of formed in each of these packets had a sort of really beautiful, loving, individualized consciousness. And yet you could see how then it was going into this expansive void, but was very intelligent, if that makes sense. And I was like, oh my God, I can't get any better than this. And it was just the most incredible experience. And then it, it was like this collapsing effect where the energy then slowed down and kafunk. I was back in my body, back in my body. I, I should rather say I was back in the awareness of, oh wait, there's this personality called Matt and there's this body that this personality called Matt sort of walks around in and this place that's supposedly called earth, you know, and all these relationships, but all of a sudden everything was just connected as interpenetrating scintillating light forms. See, now I bring that up. The, that's the, I'm so glad you told the story because that's the integration. Like some yeah. people I think, well, that's a separate experience that I want to have, but yeah. we really recognize that that experience of those beings and that being yeah. or that, right. how you described it as like, they're so caring and so compassionate and so yeah. expanded. And so we are that. And yes. so see, that's and that was it. And you know, so it was so interesting, like you, I'd sought healing in a myriad of different ways. I mean, oh my God, I spent in two years, I know it was $28,000 over a three year period is $40,000. I'd spent chasing cures. Mm -hmm. And after that experience, within a couple of days, I mean, I want to say, let's say within a week, just to be safe, but it was a very short order of time that 90% of my back pain was gone. My skin had totally cleared up. It's never come back. Um, I think the depression and anxiety that came from chronic illness was totally lifted. And then I went on to swim like around Key West with a team, like in the ocean, you know, and I went on to become stronger than I've ever been. And, and all those things, it does, that's, that's the form it took because that's part of my individualized teaching curriculum. The essence was, oh my God, like I'm always home. And, uh, you know, and so it, it just, it would be okay, whatever the outcome was. But I, I just remember, I always remember that story because it was like for a minute, Jesus was like, all right, you guys, we got a tough case here. Can we please just like show this? Uh, just show him. All right. Just show, just pull the veil up. Just let him see. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so sick of listening to this. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Jesus just said, all right, come on. All right. Let me show you what it's really all about. And that's not to say that, you know, I got a glimpse into what it's all about still. I mean, even those experiences are, you know, like a tiny pebble of sand on this infinite beach of diamonds and rubies. Like, so I, I don't think there's any specialness whatsoever to that story because at the end, it's all the essence of the love that was exchanged. And then my capacity to be a more authentic, loving, genuine, kind human being doing my part in the atonement or the at one man. And I think, I mean, either, either what's happening is part of the curriculum or it's not. So I really fully, firmly in my totality believe strongly that this is, um, this is medicine for planet earth right now. This is medicine for us. And, and I say that with so much love and tenderness and compassion for people who may have temporarily forgotten spiritual nature or that there's a wholeness and there's an order within this and that we really can embody a much 
more true harmonic of love and everything and that the 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 second or third or fourth coming of Christ is not the appearance of Jesus in a body necessarily but it's the Christ awakening in the cell of every human as cells of that body so so glad we got to talk i just I know, love you so too. much I I love said, that was like a perfect i can't believe it's actually been over an hour if you can believe it i know i know but we're, I, we're I, in I that wanna, note. before we end i just want to uh let people know uh who you are and that was a perfect way actually to end it because it's easter and so i'm going to yes. be sending this video out either today or tomorrow and like what you just said at the end here of this is the resurrection it's not jesus coming back it's it's the awareness of our christ self our shared oneness mm -hmm. and that we are more and more having the willingness to allow this experience to happen so that it can be embodied so that we're living as these light beings and yeah. so everyone i want to just thank you for watching this is dr matt lyon and i wanted to just show you his website before we go um i'm not sure if i can do this but i'm gonna try uh i'm gonna share right here oh, yeah, there we go there's the dojo we all, all <laughs> high tech so this yeah, is so Diamond cool. Heart Dojo, and this is Matt's website, and you can sign up right here for a free, powerful meditation, and just a beautiful site. Your true power lies within you, and it's just, I love this so much. There you are. So <laughs> right here, you guys, diamondheartdojo.com, and you can find out about more about Matt and get in touch with him. So I want to thank you so much, Matt, for everything mm. that you shared. Yeah, thank living you. The, you too. Live in the AAA, and just for everyone listening, how what you just expressed, Matt, is the way it's been for me of just have that inner dialogue in your voice to this inner self, whatever the guide is that you want to call it, it doesn't matter, but you just yeah. say, yo, <laughs> or like, screw this, or, you know, what, however you want to say it. Yeah. Just start What's up, Jay? Come on, Jay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So thank you so much. And I love you. Love you too, Lisa. Thank you so much. <laughs>